E41 Marketplace Ministries. It's all about your business and it's all about our father's business. It's ministry outside the box. No matter what your role is in the business world, E41 Ministries is a special place where we can walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we are called, just as Ephesians 4.1 commands us. In today's busy and frenetic world, it's a blessing to know that God has a plan to bring hope, comfort, and peace through Marketplace Ministry. The E41 Marketplace Ministry of the Fellowship, it's a kingdom building business. I'm Kerry Fink and welcome to E41 TV. This is a uh, outreach of the Fellowship uh, of Dallas, Texas, and we're part of E41 Marketplace Ministries. E41, it comes from Ephesians 4.1. Walk worthy uh, according to the vocation to which you have been called. And it really is a clarion call to marketplace ministers. And what do we mean by marketplace ministers? We mean people, people who are kingdom building people, people who are believers in Christ and who want to share the good news and the good uh, message and the hope to the people that they work with. And that, as you know, in today's politically correct environment, can often create some unique contradictions in things. And so what we try to do in E41 Marketplace Ministry is equip the people that are interested and committed to growing the kingdom to give them the tools that will enable them to be effective at uh, bringing hope, the only hope that there really is, to the marketplace, and that's in Jesus. So we're actually today, we're on location we're in Mes Mesquite, Texas, uh, which is basically part of the greater Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. And we're at the lovely location of the Family Cathedral here in uh, Mesquite, Texas. And one of the things that's going on here, and we're really blessed to be here, uh, we are together with uh, associate pastor of the, the, of the uh, Family Cathedral, Pastor Rod Brewer. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here. And what we are here for is we're actually part of the E41 Marketplace Ministers Conference. And that's one of the really exciting things that's happening is that we have people from all over this area who have gathered together because Dr. Dave Robinson, who is the founder of E41 uh, Ministries and for many years has been, uh, for I would say decades, has been a coach, a leader, a cheerleader, if you would, and helping people reach their highest potential. And he is full throttle ahead on the idea of Let's get people excited about taking Christ into the marketplace. Yeah. So thanks for being here with us today. I wanted to ask you, I was asking you before the cameras were rolling to say, tell me a little bit about your experience. Do you have experience in the marketplace outside of, quote, full-time ministry that you're involved in now? And tell us just a little bit about your background, because I think it's fascinating, and it kind of gives people an insight and an inspiration that it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. Right. Um, before full-time ministry, I guess it's, it's probably not a good word right. to use in marketplace ministry because we're all full-time ministers of the gospel from the time that we get saved and born again. Uh, but before I entered into the five-fold ministry uh, in Bible college, I was a air conditioning service technician. Mm -hmm. uh, I was strung out on methamphetamines. Mm. And I guess your question to me was, did I have an experience with people uh, bringing marketplace mm -hmm. ministry to me while I was an air conditioning technician right. and strung out on methamphetamines. And uh, my answer to that, Carrie, was yes, uh, I guess there was uh, two different ends of the pendulum of my encounter with Christians in the marketplace before I entered into fivefold ministry mm -hmm. after I got saved. And that was uh, Christians that I knew that were Christians, but they were most part silent and didn't approach me with anything or just uh, I knew what they stood for, but they didn't have any uh, motive of trying to get mm -hmm. Christ to me. And then I had uh, the other end of, a, of the pendulum was some that were bold and mm -hmm. overbearing and um, uh, kind of just, uh, I guess, just, oh, just flat out overbearing, uh, which was kind of a turn off to me when uh, I was uh, strung out on methamphetamines. Uh, the, the silent ones, I didn't know really what they stood for or really what they were. And then the overbearing ones, I didn't really want what they had because they really weren't concerned about me. They were just concerned about propagating uh, their agenda to mm -hmm. me in regards to trying to get me saved. And so uh, that's my experience with uh, 
those in Christianity before my salvation experience mm -hmm. in the marketplace. And what was interesting, you said you kind of had a burning bush experience that kind of, you know, kind of shifted your life dramatically. And what, what, what we were talking about, too, is the fact that now that you really have seen, uh, you have the experience from the side of the people that oftentimes we're called to go and try to have an impact for Christ with. And at the same time, now you've seen in your own case, what you perceived as effective and what, what really didn't help. And it sounds like, if, I don't know, this may be an oversimplification, but it sounds like you had some people that may have been living the life of Christ, but they, they really, their light wasn't really shining in a way that it was being effective for you. And then other people, like you said, were so busy just pounding a message home that you weren't sure if it was really about you as an individual or if it was just they were trying to keep score with how many souls they had saved exactly. or some deal like that. So now when you reach out to somebody or you, you observe a situation that you believe uh, is, is, is a moment where, where Christ should be introduced, you said you kind of balance that to try to find a, a, a ground that you can talk to somebody. I don't, you know, it could be somebody you met uh, at a shop or, or someplace along the way, but how do you approach that? Uh, m my philosophy on uh, marketplace evangelism is, is, and that's why I'm so excited about Dr. Robinson being here with us mm -hmm. and them hearing it from an outside source, not associate pastor Rod right. uh, and, 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 and hearing, uh, because I've always believed that, uh, memorizing Romans Road mm -hmm. and quoting Bible verses to individuals without connecting with what's going on in their life, uh, whether it's a sickness, a child on drugs or something that they're going through or just being sensitive and noticing that you show up to work and somebody's discouraged. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't take that big of a spiritual gift to right. notice when somebody's discouraged and be willing to step into their influ circle of influence and let them know that you care and just ask them, hey, what's up? Is there anything that I can pray with you about? And uh, my philosophy is more about hosting the presence of God right. and carrying the presence of God and the kingdom of God into the marketplace and just being sensitive. That's one of the things, another things that I've heard Dr. Robinson speak in this conference is he's continually talking about how we need to be sensitive, sensitive, sensitive. Mm -hmm. And that uh, as an associate pastor and the opportunities that I get to teach and to preach to the people of God, uh, I try to share with them not to get so wrapped up in your to-do list or your iCal, your mm -hmm. calendar, mm -hmm. uh, and what's next on your to-do list that you become desensitized and you're so wrapped up on what's next on your to-do list that you don't, you miss an opportunity mm -hmm. to see what's next on God's to-do list instead of your to-do list. Yeah. And so, and being sensitive, so... And, you know, one of the things that's interesting is we're watching, again, like we were talking about, we're really here as part of the E41 Marketplace Ministers Conference. And, and it's so wonderful. You guys are such gracious hosts to have us oh, thank here. You. And it's such a, it's such, so good to see such a turnout and people literally taking notes. You know, they're taking the materials that Dr. Robinson has and they're making notes as he's right. going through points. And it's really, to me, this is my observation, but I'm curious to hear what yours is. You, what you're doing as a church, you are really empowering your congregation to be effective for the kingdom, it seems. Right. Yes, uh, I, you know, we've got a long way to go. Uh, I know uh, we need to change some of our terminology mm -hmm. and some of our lingo that we share from the pulpit mm -hmm. uh, to uh, uh, encourage uh, the people in our congregation uh, that they are full-time ministers, that, they, that there's, there's, there's as much value. My wife is an RN, mm -hmm. and there's as much value in God's eyes and the kingdom eyes, in, 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 in the kingdom's eyes of the kingdom that when she shows up at the hospital as an RN, hosting the presence of God, looking for opportunities to get the kingdom and the presence of God into somebody's life, there's just as much value on that as when Pastor Rod stands behind the pulpit mm -hmm. and opens up the Bible and, and, and brings forth a message from the Word and uh, equipping the saints. So. Well, see, that's one of the things Davis talked about a lot. He said, you know, we, we as uh, pastors in, in, uh, in the ministry or leaders of the church that are there who are doing the training and the equipping for, it's, it's what we equip them and arm them with on Sunday so that they go out into the marketplace and can be effective Monday through Friday. And a lot of times pastors 
who, who are saying, I want to increase the footprint of my church. I want to reach more lives. And, and, and usually the first thing we think about is, well, let's do something that's going to get people to come down to the church. But it almost seems like when, at least when I read the New Testament, Jesus spent a lot of time. He just went out yeah. to where the people were. And I think, Carrie, one of the things uh, that we've got to get away from is it, you want to build a church. When you're a pastor mm -hmm. uh, and you're in fivefold leadership, you want to build sure. the ministry that you're a part of. But sometimes you can default in that in bringing forth a motive that that's all you mm -hmm. want to do. And that in the day and age we live and from where I come from, a meth addict, I can pick that up in a minute. When you have an ulterior motive mm -hmm. or a personal selfish mm -hmm. agenda, mm -hmm. I can pick up on that. And, and unbelievers pick up on that. And we really have got to get away from maybe some of that terminology mm -hmm. of doing things or equipping our our saints, the, the ones that are in our congregation, equipping them just to give Jesus away mm -hmm. and to give the kingdom away mm -hmm. without a motive of necessarily having to say, you know what, the only reason you're doing that is because you want me to come to church with you right. on Sunday morning. Right. Because somebody, I didn't get saved in church. Right. I didn't get saved in an altar. I got saved in a dope motel in East Dallas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we got to, so that's some of the terminology we got to get away from is believing that the only way that we're going to get them saved is if we invite them to church. No, we have the power and the Holy Spirit has empowered mm -hmm. you to, to save anyone, to see anybody saved any place, anywhere, anytime. And uh, one of the things that I try to train our people here to do is uh, don't necessarily default of uh, you have to bring them back to the church or bring them back mm -hmm. to fivefold ministry and then let the fivefold ministry do their work to get them saved. Right, right. right. I want to see people get, you get them saved, you bring them to Pastor Rod or right. you bring them to Pastor Harry and they're saved. And, we, and then we enter in the process of helping them get discipled. Yeah, isn't it something like, you know, I've heard people use this ex analogy even with like uh, college. You know, the people who sometimes are sent to college by their parents as young people, they don't really appreciate the experience because they're there because their parents said, you're going to college, it's just what's expected of you. And then they don't really take it seriously and they don't really study well and it becomes just this chore. And then compare that to somebody who later in life has had a few experiences, now goes to college, they always typically will be the excellent student because now they want to learn. And, and maybe that's what you're saying in this case is that when when somebody has truly met Jesus along the way, then they get they sort of get on fire and they want to just just keep keep right. keep learning more and 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 going deeper in the things right. of the Lord. Right, right. Uh, you know, and an, another thing that uh, we really need to, to 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 refrain from as far as fivefold ministers is. Uh, putting off the, 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 or portraying um, in our message or in what, of trying to get church attendance, mm -hmm, church attendance, mm -hmm. church attendance, church attendance, um, trying to get people to come back again another week, come back again mm -hmm. another week. We need you here. Come back another, mm -hmm. and we do because we yes. want to equip you. Yes. And that's very important. But it goes far beyond just church attendance right. and, and encouraging our people to be faithful in church attendance but being faithful to the marketplace and being faithful to Christ in the marketplace and taking the church to the world. No, so. I think I think what you're saying is so true because even when you read throughout read throughout the New Testament, you know, I think this is maybe a challenge and and it was something you hit on too. You said you were talking about how uh, even before you found the Lord, you know, we would say as you, as you get the Holy Ghost, you sort of become you get a better discerning spirit, but it, you know, even people in the world, they're sort of cynical. So they're always like, what's your angle? Right. You know, and, and I think that's so important that when you, what you're saying makes so much sense when you're equipping people to be able to go out and really care about the people that they're interacting with. It makes all the difference in the world because it's not somebody, like you said, just shoving a scripture at, at them. Uh, in fact, we, we had this uh, conversation about um, a missionary uh, group that was going out to build some some wells and uh, for people who were dying for the for the lack of water. And the point of this was uh, they said, well, aren't you going out to preach? And said, no, we're going to go out and get these people some water because they got to live. Then we're going to then they're going to see we care. Then they're going to be right. be ready to hear a little bit right. more. So, well, what is this? What is this all about? Right. So let me ask this question then, because, because I, th I really think you guys are sort of on a cutting edge. First of all, 
Uh, you've taken a, a, a big step forward hosting, having uh, the E41 Marketplace Masters right. Conference here, which is a, uh, it's a fanta fantastic uh, time together for everybody. And uh, so one of the things that is amazing is Dave Robinson is doing a lot of training sessions here while we're uh, here. Right. He's actually, uh, not only did he speak Sunday morning, Sunday evening, uh, tonight he's gonna be speaking and he's actually walking us through the steps with the idea, and I heard even when you guys were doing the closing prayer for everybody and asked everybody to gather at the altar, it was almost like you were uh, uh, sharing a mantle or something, say, you know, I'm, I'm really, really uh, uh, setting you forth now. Because I think somebody said, no, I, I, I'm going to change my terminology. You are our marketplace ministers. And that was so profound, I thought. Right, right. I know uh, my wife, uh, just in this conference, and we've only been at it one day, but uh, she woke up this morning, Monday morning, with, and, 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 and this is something we live by, but it's so easy mm -hmm. that if we're not consistently communicating from fivefold mm -hmm. ministry uh, position to the, the, the people of God, the, the royal priesthood, right. that this is something that we need to continually communicate as fivefold ministers and equipping the saints. It's not something that you just have a conference right. and we walk away from. Right. If, if we have this conference and walk away from it, people will default to what they knew before we, we had the conference. So one of the things that I'm gaining here is, is, is the, the understanding that there has to be consistent communication mm -hmm. of validating the people of God and their full-time ministry wherever God has placed them to influence people for, for uh, the kingdom. So. Oh, there, there's, no, there's no question about it. The, the, and, and one of the things that's fascinating, uh, even as we were talking to some of the people who were attending the conference, there was a lady who said, I am full-time. I do work with um, uh, helping people with home mortgages and things like that, but I see it as my ministry. Yep. I'm actually going out. Yep. Uh, there, there's a gentleman who does pest control service. He said, look, I'm in 30 homes a day, or I forget the exact number, but he said, he said I do this because it's my opportunity to, to, to minister to people where they are. There was another lady who was uh, involved in, uh, in real estate who saw it the same way. You're talking about your wife seeing it that way. So you guys are already on the cutting edge of the whole right. thought process of this. We, we have a, 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 a young woman here in the church. She got, actually got saved under mine and Tracy's ministry. Mm -hmm. And she's a massage therapist. And she looks at it as, I get paid to lay hands on the sick and <laughs> see them recover. Amazing. And, that, and the thing about it is, Carrie, that's exactly what's happened. Because she is happening in her, in her daily work. And uh, I, I like what uh, Dr. Robinson said uh, last night was, don't show up to work, show up to worship. Right. And, right. and showing up that that's your place of worship. And uh, I, I believe she's going to be doing a taping with you guys yes. uh, tomorrow yes. morning. Yes. And uh, to hear her testimony of some of the things that have taken place by her uh, doing massage therapy and just people getting healed, and people getting delivered and people opening up about uh, maybe. And she gets to, to, to face a lot of people that are entrenched in new age religion and stuff mm -hmm. like that and be able to bring Jesus to them in the aspect of, of truth is not a concept that mm -hmm. you come to in your own realization, right. but truth is a person, Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Because that was one of the things I wanted to ask you about. I want to talk about, you know, this world that we live in where uh, politically correct. I, I, I've, I've said this a lot, but it, it occurs to me that saying Jesus, a five letter word in the marketplace could perhaps get you in more trouble than saying a four letter word, right. which is just, it's almost like. Well, that's what, if you, if you go back to the concept and the philosophy of what I believe and what I'm saying that Dr. Robinson believes of taking the presence of God and being sensitive to people's needs that mm -hmm. are around you, uh, you know, you're not going to run across too many people that are discouraged or maybe their marriage is on the rocks and you, you, you see that and you see that something's going on in their life and you ask and you're concerned and you have consideration. You, ha you are concerned. You are compassionate. I don't know too many people that are going to report you for right. being too nice, you no, know, right. or being too kind That's or right. being too caring or too concerned about what's going on in somebody's life. And it's, again, you approach it there and then they understand that there's something different, different about you yes. because we do live in such a cold, hard, mean, you know, mm -hmm. uh, calloused uh, culture in which we mm -hmm. live in. 
And then, so when we manifest those attributes of the fruit of the Spirit and also the power of God, I believe mm -hmm. we, have, we ought to Amen. be seeing people healed in the marketplace. So we manifest <laughs> uh, the fruit of the Spirit, yes. the love of God, yes. and the power of God. Yes. I, you know, I don't know too many people that's going to complain about being touched, healed, delivered, or encouraged uh, in the marketplace because somebody cared. That's right. You know? they, they seem to, re to respond more to the fact that you care for them as an individual and they see Jesus working that's, in your life. That's it. Or, or you show up wanting to hammer them in the head with the Romans road and try to just put another notch on your mm -hmm. belt to try to get somebody saved. Yeah, you're probably going to get into some trouble in the marketplace, but it goes far beyond that. And, I, and when I say that, Carrie, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not playing down the power of the Word of God. Right. I'm not playing down the gospel. But let's demonstrate the gospel with our actions uh, and, and, and then back it up with our words. But what we've wanted to do is go forth and be, uh, be a, a loud, boisterous, obnoxious voice and not back it up with the actions. That's right. And, so, you know, again, I, all I can do is, you know, when I read the New Testament and I look at the examples of where Jesus interacted with people, I didn't hear him walk up and hand somebody a tract. He would sit down and just start. He talking. wanted to know about what's going on with him. Yeah, he wanted to know about what was concerning them. Which is funny because he already knew. <laughs> <laughs> he already knew. Yeah. So, so, so it, 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 and and if you remember, like I'm just thinking right now of the the the, the woman by the well, and come see this man who told me. Yeah. You know, I mean. So, so, and so I think, Jesus even used icebreakers. That's right. That's my <laughs> point. <laughs> and, I, and I think what we're doing here, or, or, or I hope that uh, what we can accomplish through E41 is because people, as Christians, we oftentimes don't know how to navigate all this. We keep seeing the things on the news where so-and-so got in trouble because you know, they want to take the Ten Commandments out of this place. Or there's all these things where, you know, if you will, Christianity is under fire kind of things. And so I think people uh, kind of shrink away because they said, "Well, we're supposed to be we're supposed to be the the kind ones. We're supposed to turn the other cheek. We're supposed to, uh, you know, offer grace and mercy to somebody." And and so sometimes there's a tendency for us to not then know how to respond to those challenges when they come up in the marketplace. And uh, so I think that's one of the things that with E four one Marketplace Ministries, we're trying to find we're trying to explain that you already walk in the authority. You know, and and they like, can't take that away, can they? That's right. And we are in a country, and if people get confused. We we've done uh, a lot of people get confused about the concept of free speech, and you know there is there there are things that you you absolutely can't do. But for the most part, you really are are allowed to to um, to have your beliefs. Thank God, we we work with a pastor who's in prison in uh, in Iran right now because he was preaching the gospel as a Christian, uh, and and. Here, fortunately, we don't have that problem. The, but it is a question of how do you advise people that you could come into contact about how they would conduct themselves in the workplace if maybe perhaps their their boss or they feeling that the area is a little hostile toward towards it. Uh, well, number one is pray. Yeah. <laughs> number one, pray about the situation and uh, ask the Lord to uh, bring up opportunities, maybe in the lives of those that uh, are resistant. Uh, but another thing, Carrie, when I read in the New Testament that when when persecution or opposition arose, uh, it, the gospel seemed to spread like wildfire. Yes. It seemed like the, the manifestation of the power and the glory of God and the presence of God seemed to increase when Christians found themselves in a culture of opposition, even like we are today. So yes. the, the, when I see opposition rise up in our culture against the gospel, I get excited Yes, because that tells me that this thing's fixing to break out and, and spread out. And if I'm not mistaken, I heard Dr. Robinson say that last night in the meeting last night, that it's time for us to make a stand, uh, not an obnoxious stand, but just a stand for right. what we believe in and our convictions and, and share those in love and just watch what the Lord will do. And I believe the Lord is giving America, and at least America and the Western Christian, Christian world, God is giving us a second chance and another Amen. opportunity Amen. to see. Because to be honest with you, I feel like this nation is probably pretty much fed up with all the stuff that's going on. Yes. The double-mindedness yes. and uh, all the double standard and all of that. 
and you're, you're starting to see a hunger for what is truth. Yes. Can somebody just tell me what truth is? Yes. And then demonstrate it for me? Yes. And so it's really an opportunity for the church to arise and shine. I'll share this. I don't know how much time we got. You left, go for it. But Isaiah 60 says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is upon you. A great dark gloom, gross gloom shall, gloom shall cover the earth, but the glory of God is upon you. Amen. And when I read Isaiah 60 and I see it getting dark and I see it getting gloomy and I see it, uh, this, this gross darkness coming upon a nation or coming upon a people, I get excited mm -hmm. because God said, the glory of God is upon you. Preach it. And so, yeah, I get excited. <laughs> no, that's good. The, that's about good. About the glory of God. So we just have a minute or so left. I want to okay. ask you a question. If you had met your 20-year-old self today, you, you're out there and you just walked up to your 20-year-old self, the one the one that was working in the air conditioning field. Strung in on mess, drugs. Messed up with all these things and, you know, probably had a lot of, a lot of things that led up into that and just a lot of trials and challenges along the way. What would you say to that person? Well, the first thing I wouldn't, the first thing I would do is not throw up a wall. Right. And so often when we see people manifesting sin, we want to throw up a wall of separation that says, oh, I can't believe they're doing that. I can't right. believe they said that. I can't believe they're acting right. like that. And I was bad. You're talking about an obnoxious sinner. I was an obnoxious sinner. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't put up a wall of division and, and then cast that person out mm -hmm. of saying, you know, they're unreachable. Uh, take the wall down. I think if, if I met me uh, in the state that I was in before I got saved and I, I me today, uh, what I would do is, is I would press in with love and uh, love casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. So if there's any anxiety or fear of trying to reach an obnoxious sinner, love's going to cast that fear and that anxiety right. out. And the thing about it is when you step into love and you follow a divine flow of love, when you take a step of love towards that obnoxious sinner, then the Lord, that's when the Lord's going to begin to reveal yes. things, whether it's through the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, mm -hmm. a prophetic utterance, discerning of mm -hmm. spirits or whatever it, it may be that's going on in that person's mm -hmm. life. And you know what? It, 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 if, if people would have just took the time to know my story, that I grew up without a father yes. and that I was just looking for identity, yes. if there would have been a Christian that would have at least tried to step into my yes. circle and ask some questions, I, I, I probably would have responded in a way that would have surprised them in saying, wait a minute, this person cares about me. There you go. So. That's, a, that's very profound. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you okay. for being with us today. It's really been a blessing, first of all, to be here with the E41 Marketplace Ministries, it's been great. but also to, to just ha hear your personal story and the things that you're doing, the impact in lives that you're Amen. making. And we're excited about just seeing the impact that's going to happen here uh, over the next year as you have really uh, moved the congregation into the Marketplace Ministry. Amen. So I'm Kerry Fink for E41 TV. Thank you for joining us and God bless you. Amen.